Ashta. Hi, Vivon. Good morning, Ava. Ava's got nice bows this morning. Very good. Good morning, Brandon. Hi, Langston. Hi, Fiona. Yes, Ava. Yes, Ava. Good morning, Mrs. Light. Um, I did put like a headband and put those on there. Very lovely, Ava. Very lovely. Good morning. Hi, Erin. Good morning. We've got Mahialani. Hi, Brandon. All right. Very nice, Avery. Avery got fancy. Beautiful. You're ready for spring now, aren't you? Spring and Easter and so many exciting things. That is great. Good morning. Good morning. Hi, Fiona. Good morning, Mrs. Lai. Good morning, Sandana. All right, boys and girls. So I was thinking that today, instead of starting at the beginning of our video, we could start in the middle of our video. Beautiful and see what we have not watched a lot of. So beautiful, Avery. We're gonna be working on that today. I love that Fiona has some shapes over there. That is great. All right, so boys and girls, we're gonna take a look right over here. So like I said, I'm gonna start kind of in the middle, but we're gonna watch it from the middle to the end today, okay? So let's go ahead and say good morning. Good morning, boys and girls. Good morning. And we are gonna have a great day. Welcome back, David. David looks like he's in his new house. You're at your new house. David actually is gonna be here for a few more days, a few more days, but he's living at his new house. So that is awesome. We're happy to see you, David. All right, boys and girls. So make sure you're ready to sing along with us. And here we go. I lost it. Where is it? There it is. A, B, E, have. H, A, B, E, have. H, A, B, E, have. H, A, B, E, Beautiful. 
we finally watched it all the way to the end. That was awesome. All right, boys and girls, we are going to move right along into our letter this week. Here it is, letter B. Let's sing it together. Reach that Skywriter finger up with me and let's sing our letter B song. We're gonna write our capital B and our lowercase b together. Here we go, ready? B says B. B says B. Start up. B says B. And B says B. And we already have a wonderful list of B words going over here. So let's take a look at what we have so far. So take a look right over here. Read it with me, boys and girls. Let's say it together. So we've got bear and we drew a double dipper. It's a brown bear. We've got ball. We've got our Brandons, Brandon A's and Brandon N. We've got bunny, butterfly. We need to add some more B words over here. I'm gonna call on David. David, go ahead, give us a B word, buddy. Uh-oh, David has a new computer, you got it? A B. A B, like a bumblebee? Like bzzz, good one. Hey David, what's the first letter of B? B. Yeah, I was, I was kind of giving a joke. The first letter of B is B, is that funny? Is letter B to spell the word B? It's just a spelling joke. You don't have to laugh. Okay, here we go. Everybody, let's get our hands up. Let's spell B. Of course, we know the very first letter is letter B, but here we go. Let's sound it out. Ready? B, E. Do you hear the E sound? That E sound is actually a double E. B, B. There I go. And I'm going to have to draw this B, so... I know some of it is going to be black, head, thorax, abdomen, stinger. There's my stinger. And we, need, we know we need some stripes on it. We need some wings on it. And we need some yellow. Sound good? How about bright yellow? Like this kind of bright yellow? we go. All right, boys and girls, another letter B word from Avery. Avery, go ahead and unmute, my dear. Okay, say it one more time, Avery. Big voice, honey. can't hear you at all, Avery. Oh man, let me see, let me see. Hold on just a second, don't go anywhere. Don't go anywhere, stay right there. Let me see if I can close something. Sometimes this helps my side. Okay, Avery, can we try it one more time? One more time? Okay. Did you say the color blue? Any chance you can write, start writing it on your whiteboard? Because I can't hear you at all. Do you have your whiteboard close by you? Can you start sounding it out for us? Sound out your word? She's going to do it. She's going to help us out here. She's going to start writing her word. I'm so sorry, Avery. I can't hear you, honey. Sometimes this happens and I don't know why. Oh, man. But she's going to work on it. All right, here we go. We're going to figure out Avery's word here. Okay, she's got it. She's gonna start sounding it out. We're gonna figure it out. All right. So boys and girls, all eyes on Avery right now. Let's see what her word is. Starts with a B that we know. She's sounding it out. Here she goes. All right. Broom. 
broom. I love it. Broom, is that right, Avery? Broom? Excellent. Okay, this is a word we can write. And it has a great blend at the beginning. Boys and girls, everybody get your hand up. We're gonna write the word broom. B -b and we know it starts with a B, but it's not just a B, it's a B, it's a B and an R. Now, I love the middle of this word. This is a great word. I want everybody to say it slow with me. So get your hand on up. Let's stretch this word out. Here we go, Langston, you ready? Say the word with me, ready? Brr, ooh. Ooh is the double O. Broom, what's the last sound? It's an M, B-R-O-O-M. And I'm gonna draw a broom. I'm gonna try to draw a broom like this. There we go, a broom. It kind of looks like the broom that I would put in Frosty the Snowman's hand, but there it is right there. All right, let's do one more for today. Just one more for today. I'm going to call on K.O. K.O., go ahead and tell us your B word. B, like this kind of B. Did you say B? B, like this kind of B. Not the other one. Ah, oh, you mean like sight word B? No, like this kind of B. Like, so we've got bump. There's two kinds of B that I know. So there's bumblebee, which we have right here. And then there's, would you like to be my friend? There's the sight word B. There, what but, is, uh-huh. There, there's like three kinds of B. Okay. Like this one is sick the same as B. So it's like B-E-E -E -E still. Okay. Yes. Okay, we've got that. B-E-E -E right there. Like B, like Bumblebee. Can we use this one right here for your word? Is that okay? Then I'm gonna call on another friend to give me a word. I'm gonna call on Ava. Ava, unmute yourself. Oh, go ahead and tell us, Ava. Color word? That color word? Is that the one, Ava? Oh, like your bows, like a blue bow. Okay, so Ava said color word blue, which I love it. So blue starts with a great blend. Blue has a blend. So everybody, let's say it slow. Here we go. Bull, b, b, bull, there's a B and an L. Bull, ooh, and the ooh in blue is actually U-E. B-L-U-E, blue. I'm gonna draw some blueberries. Can I draw blueberries? There we go. There's my blue blueberries. All right, now boys and girls, we've got lots of room left. We're going to continue to add some words tomorrow, but we need to learn about our special E word that we've started talking a little bit about. This is my E word. Egg, egg. And lots of eggs are laid in springtime. Why is it that lots of eggs would be laid in springtime? Well, there's some very specific reasons that eggs would be laid in springtime. Samira, why would eggs be laid in springtime? Because it's, because it's warm enough to find, to go a lot of places to find food for the baby chicks and it's warm enough for them to hatch out. Exactly, because of the weather and the abundance of food. So lots of baby animals are born in springtime because it's warm and there's lots of food growing right now. So we are going to read a very special book called Chickens Aren't the Only Ones. And when we read this book, we are going to learn about other animals that are oviparous. Will you say this word with me? Say this word with me. Oviparous. We are going to learn about oviparous animals. Oviparous means they hatch from eggs. Are you oviparous? Did you hatch from an egg? No, no. Our June's like, Mrs. Light, I did not hatch from an egg. No, you are not oviparous. But 
there's way more animals than just chickens. So this book is called Chickens Aren't the Only Ones by Rue Heller. I love this one, it's so classic. And look at all those chicks in a row. Well, they're not chicks anymore, they're hens, they're laying their eggs. Chickens aren't the only ones. Chickens lay the eggs you buy. Some of you might be buying eggs because you want to start decorating them to get ready for Easter. The eggs you boil or fry or dye. There they are, there's the Easter eggs. And the Easter eggs that we usually color and decorate come from chickens. Or leave alone so you can see what grew inside naturally. But of course we know they're the same eggs that a baby chick would hatch from. But chickens aren't the only ones. Look at this. Look at that beautiful peacock. There are the peacock eggs. Amazing, those feathers. Every bird, wild or tame, does the same. Every type of bird hatches from an egg. Sorry, I'm having trouble hearing you. Um, sorry, that was my Siri. Don't listen to that. The ostrich lays the largest egg. So look at all of these birds' eggs. Look how beautiful they are, all the different colors. This is the ostrich egg. It's humongous. If you put your hands together like this, you would be about the size of an ostrich egg. They're huge. The hummingbird is the smallest. So there's a teeny tiny egg. If you can just show a teeny, 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 tiny piece on your finger, that would show you about the size of a hummingbird egg. A hummingbird egg is so tiny. Chickens aren't the only ones. Most snakes lay eggs. Look at the snake eggs. They're long. They almost look like they're oval shaped. And lizards too. Lizards lay eggs and crocodiles. Look at the baby crocodile coming out of that egg. And turtles do. Look at that. The turtle laid all those little eggs right there. And dinosaurs who are extinct, but they were reptiles too. There's the little dinosaur eggs right there. There's the baby dinosaurs coming out. We saw some dino eggs hatch when we read our very special dinosaur story, Dazzle. Frogs and toads and salamanders lay eggs. Well, we know all about the life cycle of a frog. We know frogs lay eggs. And when they hatch their tadpoles who grow legs and climb a lily pad, just like their mom and dad. They don't have claws or scaly skin. They're called amphibians. No claws, no scaly skin because they're amphibians. Fish eggs float up to the surface or sink to the bottom of the ocean floor. So you might see fish eggs on the bottom of the ocean or floating at the top of the ocean. Pretty amazing. This mother seahorse lays her eggs into the father's pouch. He keeps them there until they hatch and then he's through. I think that's nice of him, don't you? So when a seahorse lays some eggs, the father carries them around in his pouch. These fathers too are helping out by guarding eggs protected by that foamy mass that's floating by. And they won't leave until they're sure that all the eggs have hatched. So there's actually eggs up here, they're floating, and the father fish are keeping watch on them. Pretty amazing. These don't look like eggs to me, but they were laid in the sea. This is a shark egg. Check out that shark egg. Let me see if I can get it nice and close for you. There's the shark egg right there. And this one by a ray is a mermaid's purse, they say. So like a stingray or a manta ray lays an egg that looks like this. So here's a shark egg, here's a ray egg. Look at those rays swimming, they're beautiful. 
The octopus is said to shed 100,000 eggs and then to hang them up in strings attached to rocks or caves. So I want you to take a look. These are octopus eggs. Look at all these hanging on string. Look at that. Amazing, how scientific. The moon, moon snail's eggs are mixed with sand to form this color looking band. So moon, moon snail eggs, pretty amazing. Spiders wrap their eggs in sacks. So there's a spider egg sack right there, right there. Snails, you know, are very slow, but they lay eggs that hatch and grow. So here's some snail eggs down here. Wow, so many different creatures lay eggs. This is amazing. Insects who have six legs and lay many different kinds of eggs. This one will hatch into a hungry caterpillar who will grow and grow and grow and grow and then climb up a stem and change into this a chrysalis and change again one summer morn. That's how a butterfly is born. We'll learn a lot more about a buff buff butterfly next week. Animals with fur or hair who nurse their young and don't lay eggs are known as mammals, mammalia. But these are two exceptions and they both live in Australia. So this is the spiny anteater. It's a mammal who lays eggs. And this is the duckbill platypus, also a mammal who lays eggs. Chickens aren't the only ones. There's more to discuss. Everyone who lays an egg is oviparous. Amazing, thumbs up if you learned about a new animal that lays eggs. Anybody learn about a new animal that lays eggs? That is pretty amazing. So many different kinds of animals that lay eggs. I love that book, it is one of my favorites. All right, boys and girls, right now we're going to switch gears just a little bit. Yes, Mahilani. That's right. So many different kinds of creatures are oviparous. Pretty amazing stuff. I love it. Love it, love it. All right, boys and girls, we are going to take out this special page called Timeline. So we're going to switch a little bit to social studies. Langston, that's part of today too. Don't you worry. So we are going to switch to timelines and we are going to learn a little bit about what exactly is a timeline and what does your timeline look like? You have a timeline too. What, Mrs. Lai? I didn't hatch from an egg and I have a timeline. Are you telling me all this crazy stuff? Yep, I am. All right, let me get this going here. Are you okay, Srishta? Srishta, are you okay, honey? Do you wanna unmute Srishta? Okay, go ahead, honey. Okay, go ahead. Okay, no worries, honey. All right, boys and girls. So we are going to take a look right here at timelines and we're gonna focus on reading this right now. So we're gonna keep everything in our smart brain for just a little bit, hands down for just a little bit, boys and girls. And we are going to take a look at timelines. It says, what is a timeline? A timeline is a line that shows when things happened. What does this timeline show? Well, I have some days of the week down here. This says Friday, Saturday, and 
happened Sunday. So this is what happened on Friday. This is what happened on Saturday. And this is what happened on Sunday. That is part of what a timeline is. So I'm going to open this up. I'm going to take a look inside. I see now some travels. I see a boat. This says September 1620, the Mayflower sails. October 1620, there are many storms. November of 1620, the Mayflower lands in America. And December of 1620, the pilgrims start building houses. What does all that mean? It says timelines can show things that happened in the past. This timeline is about the pilgrims. They came to America long ago. So a long, long time ago, this happened over a number of months. Do you see 1620 on the timeline? Touch 1620 on your paper. It's 1620. The pilgrims came to America in the year 1620. Do you see the names of the months? I see a month right here called October. The months and years on a timeline tell us when something happened. Timelines always show events in the order they happened. Look at the timeline again. What happened first? What happened next? Do we know at first the Mayflower set sail? And this is something we already know about. So we know first the Mayflower set sail and we know next they're sailing but they have lots of storms. We know then they land in America and we know finally at last they start building houses, but we also know that they, at the beginning, they only built one big house, the common house. That's all they had time for back then. All right, boys and girls, so I'm gonna look back here. So you're going to make a timeline about you. You will write years on the black lines. You will draw pictures in the boxes. Now, this means that you are going to draw you. So what I did to get ready for this, I made a list and this list shows the year that you were born. We are going to make your timeline and your timeline is going to start with the year you were born. Now you were born in either 2014 or 2015. Thumbs up if you think you might even know the year you were born. Does anybody know the year they were born? Some of you might. So some of you already know the year you were born. That's wonderful. So the students in our class that were born in 2014 are Morgan, Fiona, Kao, Arjun, Vivon, Miriam, Dominic, Sasha, and Sreshta. All of those students were born in the year 2014. But guess what? We have a lot more students that were born in the year 2015. These are the kids that were born in 2015. Aaron, Brandon, Ace, Avery, Ava, Noah, David, Sundana, Samira, Brandon, N, Langston, Xerxes, Saman, Ira, Mahialani, and Skylar. Those are all the kids that were born in 2015. So what does that mean, Mrs. Lai? Well, what that means is that I'm going to take a look right here. And some of you I know already wrote your name right here, your name. Mrs. Lai. So some of you already wrote your name. And what that means is that down here on the line, you're going to write the year you were born. So if you're in this list, this first list, you're gonna write 2014. If you're on this list, you're going to write 2015. So depending on what year you were born, if you were born in 2014, you're on this list, you're gonna write 2014. 
If you were born in 2015, you're going to write 2015. And after you do that, you're going to draw a picture of yourself as a baby, okay? So the first box is a picture of you as a baby. And you are cozy and cuddly and your family takes good care of you and they love you a ton. There's my little baby bed. There we go. So you are going to draw a picture of you in that first box as a baby. Now, if you need help knowing which year you were born in, show me a thumbs up and I will help you. But everybody's on this list. Everybody in our class is on this list. So everybody was born in 2014 or 2015. All right, so Ava, you're gonna write 2015, just like I did, 2015, right there, okay? All right, and Mahialani, you're gonna write 2015, just like I did. You were born in 2015, all right? Sasha was born in 2014, so you're gonna write 2014. Good, good, and Samira knows when she was born. Samira knows she was born in 2015, all right? So Mahilani, did you write that already, honey, on your page? I promise you, you do, sweetie. You picked up your packet yesterday, so you have it. I want you to look for it, okay? You don't know where it is? Where's all your work, honey, that you need to do today? It's with all the work that you're gonna do today. That's math, sweetheart. That's math and math is after lunch. So we're not on the one that's for math, honey. We're on the one that has pictures of kids playing on the front. So we're looking for the one that has pictures of kids playing on the front. Mahilani, I want you to try to find it, sweetie, okay? I want you to look for it, all right? Keep looking, don't give up, keep looking. Okay, Mahilani's gonna look for it. All right, Sasha, hang on just a second because we're gonna keep going here with our timeline. So you wrote the year you were born. We're gonna skip a... We're going to skip ahead a little bit. So you wrote the year you were born. Miriam, you were born in 2014. So you're gonna write 2014. All right, so that's 2014. And we're gonna hang on just a second, okay? All right, so boys and girls, you, yes, Mahialani, you got it, honey. Join us, please, on the back side. So now we're gonna skip ahead to when you started kindergarten. So everybody started kindergarten in 2020. Everybody started the year in 2020. So that's when you started kindergarten. And you can draw a picture of yourself right here. You're happy, you're so big. You are going to school and school looks different for us right now. We have to go to school on a computer, but that is what is happening right now in 2020, just like that. So the year you were born, the year you started kindergarten, and draw a picture of you. starting kindergarten and you're just happy that you get to go to school. And we're going to keep going. So the year you were born, the year you started kindergarten, and the year it is right now. So right now, it is the year 2021. So right now I'm going to write 2021. I'm gonna find a good color for 2021. So 2021 and now in 2021, there's so much you can do. You've grown up, you've learned. Maybe you're gonna draw a picture of you reading a book because you know how to do that now. 
and you didn't know how to do that before, so maybe you're reading a book and you're so happy about it. Maybe you're playing outside because you're so big and strong now. What are you gonna draw of you today? This is all about you. So what is something that you love today now that you're grown up and you're big? Yes, Sasha, thank you for your patience, honey. Sounds perfect. That's a lot. That's going to be a big talk because that's so much stuff. That's wonderful. <laughs> yes, Kao. When I was a baby, I had a mohawk. Oh, very cute. Yes, Ava. Well, Ava, we're talking about this right now. So we're gonna stay on topic right now. Are you working on this? What are you gonna tell me about this and choose one thing to tell me about this? What, what picture you're gonna draw here for 2021? Reading a book. Perfect. Perfect. All right. So those of you that are raising your hand, we're going to keep keep it in your smart brain for just a moment. We're going to go down to finish this up at the bottom. We finished up our timeline and now it's asking us to write the first letter of all of these items. So I want you to go through. I want you to write the first letter of snake. What's the first letter of snake write it here and I want you to write the first letter of hat write it here the first letter of hat and write the first letter of I I igloo write that right here And then the first letter of p -p pig, write that here. I love it. Brandon made sure his letters went under the line. Nice, nice, nice. All right, boys and girls, we are going to slide this page away for now. I'm going to have you go ahead and take out your sight words sight word reader sorry your sight word your sight word book yesterday we worked on the word went today I'm going to turn one page again Two, three. wow we are almost to the end of this book that's amazing today we are on what w h a t what what is your favorite color? What? So pull this book out. Mahilani, I still want you to try to find this, honey. You have it somewhere. It's somewhere. I gave this one to you. I don't want you just to sit there. I want you to do that really good thing and just say, I'm going to do my best to find it. We're just doing our best to make sure we can all work together. Wonderful, wonderful. I'm going to get out my pencil and my highlighter right now. I want to make sure I've got all my good things. So here it is. We are on the what page. So lots of you have already started writing your name. That is perfect. You can write your first name and your last name right here. First name and last name. All right, boys and girls, and I'm going to go ahead and start writing. Remember, let's talk as we write. That way we can see it, see it, and hear it all at the same time. That makes us so smart. Here we go. W H A T what? Now we're on to the next one. Here we go. Ready? W H A T what? 
Now I'm on the very last line. Talk with me. Here we go. Ready? W H A T what? Now I'm going to come down to my sentences, get my highlighter ready to go. And I'm going to highlight the very first word because I see what right there. Here we go. Ready? What? Color what? And let's read the sentence together. Ready? What did you do at the dentist? And I'm going to come down here and I see what. So color what on your second sentence. And let's read it together. Ready? What did you do at the movies? And I'm coming down to my third sentence. Make sure you're using your reading finger with us. Put your finger under the first word. Color it with us. Here we go. Put your finger under the first word. Langston, why don't you read with us, buddy? Here we go. Let's read it together. Ready? What did you do at the pool? Coming down to my next sentence and I'm going to highlight that sentence. Here I go. Let's read it together. Ready? What did you do at the zoo? I'm going to come down to my next sentence and I see what again. So let me color what. what now I'm on the restaurant sentence so let's read it together ready read what did you do at the restaurant that's a really big word right there let's come down to the next sentence right here so Miriam I want to see that you're working with us so put your finger under the first word color what and let's read it together ready what did you do at the park? And we are on the very last sentence now. And I see the word what? And I'm going to color that word. And let's read that word together. Ready? What did you do at the library? And I'm asking questions. So I'm making sure all of my sentences are me asking a question. I'm coloring that first star and I'm going to go back. I'm going to put my finger under the first word of the sentence and here we go. Let's read it together. Ready? What did you do at the dentist? What did you do at the movies? Langston, we're reading, buddy. It's really important that you work with us, honey. What? did you do at the pool? What did you do at the zoo? What did you do at the restaurant? What did you do at the park? What did you do at the library? Go ahead and color the second bubble. Sorry, star. Color the second star. It's a lot like a bubble. All right, we're going to read it again one more time. Everybody's job is to read with me. You can put your finger under the first word and read it all by yourself or read with me. Let's read it one more time. Here we go. What did you do at the dentist? What did you do at the movies? What did you do at the pool? What did you do at the zoo? What did you do at the restaurant? What did you do at the park? What did you do at the library? What a fun, fun day that would be. Go ahead and color your last star. There we go. I'm gonna slide that aside. I'm gonna keep it in a safe spot. And I'm going to pull out my bird nest book. So I'm pulling out my bird nest book. Your job yesterday was to color 
that first picture or the first two pictures on that page, I would say. And I'm going to turn to the next page right here and there's one egg in the nest but I'm gonna put my finger under the first word of this sentence and the sentence says the mother bird lays eggs read it with me the mother bird lays eggs so now my job is to add more eggs into my bird's nest so you can decide what color you want your eggs to be. I'm gonna have my eggs be blue. I love to see blue bird's eggs. So I'm gonna add some eggs. There we go. I think my bird has three eggs in her nest. The one that was already there and the two that I added. So after you add your eggs, your job is to do a really nice job coloring this page, okay? So what color is your bird? Lots of you decided yesterday what color your bird is gonna be. We're working so hard on this. We're coloring so neatly and carefully on this. And this bird's nest, boys and girls, is in a, uh-oh, we're frozen. All right, this bird's nest, boys and girls, is in a tree. So I'm gonna make sure that I'm coloring the tree brown, the nice wooden color here and my leaves because it's springtime my leaves are going to be nice and green so there i go and i'm just doing my best all right boys and girls we are going to finish up for this morning